here today on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. We're happy to be talking with David Hughes, Technical Services Manager with Pivot Bio. Uh, David, good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Brent? Doing just fine. So where are you based out of, David? I'm based out of Columbia, Missouri, so right in the center of, of Missouri. Very good. I'm from Northwest Missouri myself, so I've been to Columbia several times. Uh, oh, I'm, nice. I was around the Maryville area, if you've been there before. I'll be headed there this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Small world. Well, you might first talk about your role with Pivot Bio and just some of the work that you do. Yeah, so uh, I've been with Pivot Bio since August uh, of last year, so almost a year now. And uh, I am basically responsible for business and technical operations in in the state of Missouri. So I work with uh, all facets of uh, commercializing our product uh, from uh, recruiting uh, sales representatives to represent our product independently across the state and supporting and training them, uh, coordinating their efforts, uh, coordinating uh, what we do with our growers, uh, with our uh, supply chain, and then uh, also uh, get to work with a lot of the technical support. I'm an uh, I'm actually an agronomist by trade, and have been an agronomist and soil science guy for almost 30 years. And so, uh, at this point, we're looking to hire an agronomist in Missouri, but we don't have one uh, that's been doing field customer facing agronomy. So I'm doing that role as well in Missouri. Just uh, basically, again, the business and the technical support. Well, there was a, a busy day last week around the, the Lexington area. Uh, you folks hosted a, a field day. You might kind of break that down for our listeners and what was taking place that day. What were you showcasing? Yeah, so that was an opportunity uh, for Pivot Bio to, to talk to the ag media uh, in a field setting. And we went to a farm uh, over around the Lexington, Dover area of Missouri, which is, it sits on 24 highway. and It's kind of a second bench kind of ground up above the Missouri river. In fact, uh, it's very close to where Lewis and Clark had wrote in their journals when they were taken off that uh, they passed a place called sheep's nose and uh, cause it had the, the rock out crop looked like a sheep's nose. And uh, one of uh, the grower that we were working with, uh, cooperating with Mark Dobson and his son, Lance, they live and farm, uh, work right there uh, in that area. It's beautiful country. Uh, and uh, it's kind of got deep lust soils, just like uh, where you're from in Northwest Missouri. And it kind of comes down, that deep lust soil uh, hits that Missouri river bottom. And so that, that transition in those two types of ground are, make it for a really neat place to, to work and live and farm. And we were, we were actually, actually showcasing uh, what we are doing with uh, Mark uh, and Lance Dobson on their farm to do field demonstration and trial work on kind of two things. Uh, one trial or demo we were talking about with the media that day was Lance's uh, very substantial effort that he did did on his own. I supported him in it, but he did a lot of the the thinking through what he wanted to look at and putting it out there on the farm on his own, uh, where he was looking at different nitrogen management practices uh, and just which ones were gonna perform better on their operation as they incorporate now a biological source of nitrogen in, into their system from Pivot Bio. And then the other uh, demonstration we were talking about and showcasing was our new generation two product, uh, biological nitrogen source, that we also had a side-by-side -side trial or demonstration, if you will, uh, on that same farm. So it was, a, it was an opportunity to talk to the media a little bit about Pivot Bio, but then also get, get a little bit deeper and do a little bit of a deeper dive into how we're uh, attempting to uh, use and work with a biological source of nitrogen in a grower's nitrogen management system, make that biological source of nitrogen be a base for his nitrogen management program, and then build a more efficient nitrogen management program around that. So when you reference a, that second generation product, this is Proven 40, correct? That's correct. Yes, uh, Proven 40. We just uh, 
released the, the new brand name and, and product about a week ago and uh, a little about well, maybe a week and a half ago. So pretty exciting times. We're moving to uh, a new product that's actually uh, putting more nitrogen into the plant biologically than our first product proven. And so it's pretty exciting time in the company uh, to move forward with our growers uh, and our customers in a way that we can can actually supply more nitrogen biologically in their nitrogen management program. Yeah. So what do you see as, uh, you know, some of the benefits of this Proven 40 product? Well, how will this benefit the, the farmer? Yeah. So I kind of, whenever I get asked that question, I step back a little bit and just say, first, I think what's important to understand is that from a benefit to a grower, we're supplying a significant portion of their nitrogen, corn nitrogen management need or milo nitrogen management need, grain sorghum, um, with a biological source. As you know, you know, well know Brent, uh, the number one nutrient that uh, a corn plant needs to, to achieve its genetic potential and make grain is nitrogen. And because grass species like uh, milo or corn uh, cannot produce their own nitrogen themselves, uh, unlike, say, a soybean or a pea or legume that does have symbiotic nitrogen fixation. In order to supply that need, we have to supply quite a bit of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer to accomplish our objectives in produ production. So the first benefit to a grower is that now we're able to replace a portion of that synthetic nitrogen fertilizer with a biological source that's right at the root. And it's a free source. It's an atmospheric source of nitrogen. Uh, it, as the bacteria colonize the corn roots and begin to, to perform nitrogen fixation, they put that nitrogen in the ammoniacal form, which is a, is a form of nitrogen that the plant likes and it needs, puts it right straight into the root. And so that source of nitrogen is not available for environmental loss. It isn't sitting out on the ground in between corn plants or in the soil when it gets saturated where we get excessive rainfall and the synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, when it hasn't made it into the plant yet, then can leach and get below the root zone in one loss pathway. And in another loss pathway, it can gas off in warm saturated soils and go back into atmospheric nitrogen, producing nitrous oxides and some of the actual more severe greenhouse gases. So the ability to replace synthetic with biological source of nitrogen is the number one benefit we have for a grower. When we talk about our new generation two product, Proven 40, the additional benefit is this product is an improved product two new bacteria uh, and that has the capability now of supplying 15 to 20 pounds more nitrogen per acre into a corn plant than our first generation product. So it's, it's the ability to, to have that biological source, but now we even have a better biological source that can replace more synthetic fertilizer. There's certainly going to be some cost saving there, right? With this 40 pound product. Absolutely. So the primary cost saving is, is in the efficiency of the nutrient source. <laughs> and that's what's really important to understand. When we go out as farmers and growers and we apply synthetic nitrogen fertilizer to our corn and our grain sorghum, we, we write a check for that nitrogen. And, and of course, nitrogen prices fluctuate with commodities and, and uh, some years it's better than others. And then different sources of nitrogen have different price tags. And as they become available or in more demand or, or need throughout a growing season. And, but the challenge to synthetic nitrogen fertilizer that we've always had to face, especially in, like in my role as a crop advisor for so many years, is developing management strategies that make that more efficient. Because when it's operating at its very best, and, and I mean this like when all cylinders are hitting, <laughs> Synthetic nitrogen fertilizer at its best maybe is 70% efficient. And by that, by that, I mean 70% at best ends up in the corn plant. You know, so you, you apply a product and input that that corn plant needs. Your target, your objective for that dollar that you, that check that you wrote is to get it into the corn plant. 
And even when things are going fantastically, uh, we're lucky when we get about 70% of that into a corn plant. When we move and transition to a biological source of nitrogen, now we have the capability in a, in a pass we're going to do anyway, because we apply our product in furrow with the liquid application system on a planter. So as that planter is going across the field, we apply that bacteria in furrow so that it can make contact with the emerging corn roots right away. The bacteria colonize the corn roots. They live off the corn roots, the sugars and the, the we call them root exudates, but it's the, it's the food that the corn plant pumps back through its roots into the soil. The bacteria live off of that. They fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, and put it right into the root. So we don't have that. We kind of solve the placement dilemma in nitrogen management, which is getting the nitrogen right at the root. So at this uh, field day, I'm sure you discussed, you know, pretty much all that we're going through right now. Uh, how about uh, Mark and Lance? Did they did they touch on maybe some of their uh, they did. like their lessons learned along the way with these test plots? Yeah, they did. And so what was really exciting, the field that we had the uh, media day on is actually kind of in Missouri anyways, a fairly historical field. It's the first field uh, uh, in Missouri that ever was uh, GPS soil tested uh, commercially uh, and then converted into a variable rate prescription map back in the early 90s. Uh, Mark, uh, but Lance was a young lad at the time. Uh, Mark and I were a lot younger, <laughs> but Mark was one of the first uh, three combines in the state of Missouri to have a yield monitor put on his combine, and that field was one of the first fields harvested uh, with an on-the-go yield monitor, also for the 1995 harvest. Uh, there was a John Deere 6620 combine with the Ag Leader Yield Monitor 2000, so we're talking going back a ways. Uh, <laughs> But so we talked a little bit, Mark talked and shared a little bit about the history of his farm and their history of innovation. And then Lance talked about specifically some of the objectives he was trying to accomplish with his research uh, trial, where he evaluated different nitrogen management strategies. They've traditionally had a program uh, where they've been pretty heavy with, I would call a late fall to winter uh, anhydrous application as their primary base of nitrogen fertilizer. And Mark addressed the fact that they, because they knew they had to stabilize that synthetic nitrogen, they've always used a nitrogen stabilizer and how they had, had adopted that practice a long time ago. Uh, but then understanding that they had, like all growers, a leaky system, so to speak, when you, when you apply synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, uh, Lance wanted to look at using some different timings uh, of when he put different parts of his portions of his nitrogen fertilizer on with and without a biological source of nitrogen so he could document the contribution that the biological source was making. And then looking at how, you know, kind of what, what uh, suite of, of, of practices within the system would come out and be the best overall system uh, on the farm. And so Lance did share some of that data with me since he and I worked on collecting at least the in-season data on that trial. Well, sounds like it was a, a very interesting day and a very uh, successful field day for you folks at Pivot Bio. Uh, David, we run out of time on our program, but if our listeners want more information on your products like Proven 40, do they just go to your website? Is that the best way? You know, the website's fantastic and it is a really good way to get on and talk and talk to us. Um, you, you get get there, you can you hit the page and kind of contact us and, you, you know, and maybe express a little bit of what you're looking for. You can always call any of us that work on the commercial division. We have an entire fantastic customer support center up in Ames, Iowa. And then that's also the base of our commercial operations. So. Uh, contacting the Pivot Bio Office and Customer Support Center in Ames, Iowa is a great way to get started. And then there's guys like me and gals like me in the field uh, in each of our respective regions that uh, anybody could feel free to contact and talk to to get more information. Well, we really appreciate you joining us and for the conversation this morning. Stay safe and we'll hope to do it again sometime. All right. Hey, sounds good, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Again, that's David Hughes, Technical Services Manager with Pivot Bio. 
here on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Brent Barnett.